Okay, guys, here we will discuss about a few set of questions and answers of GCP ACE exam. Let's get started. Now, question number 31. Your company developed a mobile game that is deployed on Google Cloud. Gamers are connecting to the game with their personal phones over the internet. The game sends UDP packets to update the servers about the gamers' actions while they are playing in multiplayer mode. Your game backend can scale over multiple virtual machines, VMS, and you want to expose the VMs over a single IP address. What should you do? A. Configure an SSL proxy load balancer in front of the application servers. B. Configure an internal UDP load balancer in front of the application servers. Configure an external HTTP load balancer in front of the application servers. Configure an external network load balancer in front of the application server. So D is the correct answer. Configure an external load balancer in front of the application server because external network load balancer exposes the traffic to the internet and it supports UDP. Next, you are working for a hospital that stores its medical images in an on-premises data room. The hospital wants to use cloud storage for archival storage of these images. The hospital wants an automated process to upload any new medical images to cloud storage you need to design and implement a solution what should you do create a pops up topic and enable a cloud storage trigger for the pops up topic create an application that sends all medical images to the pops up topic Deploy a data flow job from the batch template data store to cloud storage. Schedule the batch job on the desired interval. Create a script that uses the gsutil command line interface to synchronize the on-premises storage with cloud storage schedule the script as a con job in the cloud console go to cloud storage upload the relevant images to the appropriate bucket see the explanation c is the correct answer because Gsutil is the right tool to synchronize cloud storage with an on-premises file system and automating the B upload with a shell script is fairly easy. C is the correct. Next. Your auditors want to view your organization's use of data in Google Cloud. 
the auditors is most interested in auditing who accessed data in cloud storage buckets. You need to help the auditor access the data. They need what should you do? Turn on data access logs for the buckets they want to audit and then build a query in the log viewer that filters on the cloud storage. Assign the appropriate permissions and then create a data studio report on admin activity audit logs. Assign the appropriate permissions and the use cloud monitoring to review metrics. Use the export logs API to provide the admin activity audit logs in the format they want. Let's see the answer and explanation. A is correct because information about users accessing data is available through data access logs. Next. You received a JSON file that contained a private key of your service account in order to get access to several resources in a Google Cloud project. You downloaded and installed the cloud SDK and want to use this private key for authentication and authorization when performing G Cloud commands. What should you do? Use the command G Cloud auth login and point it to the private key. Use the command gcloud auth activate service account and point it to the private key. Place the private key file in the installation directory of the cloud SDK and rename it to credentials.json. Place the private key file in your home directory and rename it to Google application credentials. Explanation B is the correct answer because the G Cloud Auth Active Service Account command seems to activate the service account in Cloud SDK. Next, you are working with a cloud SQL MySQL database at your company. You need to retain a month-end copy of the database for three years for audit purposes. What should you do? Set up an export job for the first of the month, write the export file to an archive class cloud storage bucket. Save the automatic first of the month backup for three years. Store the backup file in an archive class cloud storage bucket. Set up an on-demand backup for the first of the month. Write the backup to an archive plus cloud storage bucket. Convert the automatic first of the month backup to an export file. Write the export file to a cold line class cloud storage bucket explanation and answer 
B is correct because backups are managed by Cloud SQL according to the retention policies and are stored separately from the Cloud SQL instance to take the backup and store it in bucket. Next. You are monitoring an application and receive user feedback that a specific error is spiking. You notice that the error is caused by a service account having insufficient permission. You are able to solve the problem but want to be notified if the problem recurs what should you do in the log if you are filter in the logs on server the errors and the name of the service account create a sync to be required to export all the logs create a data studio dashboard on the export logs Create a custom log based metric for the specific error to be used in an alerting policy. Grant project owner access to the service account. See the answer and explanation. C is the correct answer because you need to create a log based metric for the error to get notified if it occurs again. Next. You are developing a financial trading application that will be used globally. Data is stored and queried using a relational structure and clients from all over the world should get the exact identical state of the data. The application will be deployed in multiple regions to provide the lower lowest latency to end users. You need to select a storage option for the application data while minimizing latency work should you work. use cloud big table and data storage use cloud sql for the data storage use cloud spanner for the data storage use file store for the data storage explanation this is the correct answer because cloud spanner is a, is a fully managed relational database with unlimited scale strong consistency and up to 99.99 percent availability next you are about to deploy a new enterprise resource planning system on google cloud the application holds the full database in memory for fast data access and EO need to configure the most appropriate resources on Google Cloud for this application, what should we do? Provision printable compute engine instances. Provision compute engine instances with GPUs attached. Provision compute engine instances with local SSDs are first. Provision compute engine instances with M1 machine type. Explanation D is the correct answer. You have developed an application that consists of multiple microservices with each microservice packaged in its own Docker's container image 
you want to deploy the entire application on Google Kubernetes engine so that each microservice can be scaled in the usually what should you do? Create and deploy a custom resource definition for microservice. Create and deploy a Docker compose file. Create and deploy a job for microservice. Create and deploy a deployment for microservice. This is the type of answer. Next. It will have several applications running on different compute engine instances in the same project. You want to specify at a more granular level service account each instance uses when scaling Google account APIs. What should you do? When creating the instances, specify a service account for each instance. When creating the instances, assign the name of each service account as instance metadata. After starting the instances, use gcloud compute instances update to specific service account for each instance. After starting the instances, use gcloud compute instances update to assign the name of the relevant service account as instance metadata explanation is the correct answer because assigning different service account to different compute engine instance is the best practice if the instances require granular access controller thanks for watching see you in the next dialogue